Hey there, fifth grade artists. We are going to start a three-dimensional project. We are going to connect to your social studies curriculum uh, because you've been learning about Native Americans, the Pueblo people uh, from the Southwest United States. So we're going to get started by uh, talking about a little background information and the steps that we're going to take today. So who are the Pueblo people? The Pueblo people are Native Americans in the Southwest United States. Uh, so if you're looking at a map, uh, southwest, think kind of left-hand side, bottom. Um, and some of those states are like New Mexico and Arizona. And the people, the Pueblo people have maintained much of their traditional culture. It centers around farming, being a tight-knit community, uh, strong family values and respect. And they pass stories down from generation to generation. And that's something that you may do in your family uh, and your generations, passing down these stories and traditions and certain things like that. So start thinking about some things that you and your family uh, and community have talked about or passed down. Maybe it's uh, something you do for certain holidays or birthdays or just fun stories that you like to share. And then these are some uh, images of Pueblo people. This one is a work of art right here. Um, and then this is like one of their homes. And they loved art uh, as a part of their culture and a part of their lifestyle. And it's reflected in their um, homes and clothing and their traditions as well. So what is a Pueblo storyteller? A storyteller is a clay figure made by the Pueblo people. The first ever storyteller was made by artist Helen Cordero of the Cochiti Pueblo. And she made it in honor of her grandfather who always told her good stories growing up. And of course, telling stories, like I said earlier, is a way of life for the Pueblo and for all sorts of different uh, cultures as well. Each storyteller is someone with their mouth open because they're telling the story. Uh, and it's surrounded by smaller figures uh, usually they're children or animals or could be anybody who are listening to the story. So if they're a Mona Lisa listener, their mouth is closed, voice level zero, uh, but their ears are wide open uh, for the story. Um, here are images of Helen Cordero working with her clay. So obviously when she's working with it, the clay is still wet. Uh, she's able to add detail, smooth things out and She's working very diligently um, on her work. Um, and then the images in the middle are different views of it after it's dry and she has painted it. So as you can see, her grandfather is the largest figure. So the largest figure is the storyteller, kind of the main character. Uh, um, if this was a story, it was the main character. And he's telling the story, so his mouth is open. And then all the grandkids, including Helen, I don't know which one is Helen, but they're all... They're kind of like crawling on uh, their grandpa as they listen. And you can notice their mouths are closed because they are listening. So here's some more examples, um, not necessarily by Helen Cordero, but uh, other Pueblo artists. Um, you can see that they have interesting designs, interesting symbols, um, and interesting colors that kind of reflect uh, where they lived kind of in the deserty Southwest. So here's some more examples. Again, the storyteller has their mouth open. Uh, the listeners have their mouth closed. So this um, sculpture only has one listener. This one has three, this one has four. This one over here has three as well. Maybe there's one hanging off the back too. But when you make yours, you're gonna wanna think about all sides because a sculpture is not just the front, like a painting, two-dimensional, it's three-dimensional, so you can walk all the way around it and you would see different views um, and perspectives. So we are gonna utilize some Pueblo design. Uh, you can see they have uh, different symbols and images to represent certain things. So symbol is something that represents something else. So an image to represent something. So for instance, um, the symbol right here um, represents a bird but also like flight um, and this is water here and rain here um, fishing is a part of their life as well um, the sun this is a symbol for the sun right here and you can kind of pause and zoom in on some of these if you'd like 
Um, here's some more fun symbols. I love the symmetry and balance in a lot of them, uh, as well as the contrast, because right here they're all black and white. So they really stand out and pop. And then you can see that Pueblo people also uh, have functional sculptures as well. So functional pottery would be like pots and bowls and vases because they have a function, they have a job, uh, holding water, holding food, holding plants, things like that. Uh, and what are we going to do? So first, uh, you'll sketch ideas and symbols in your sketchbook. Uh, we're gonna read some stories too, so I'll link those as well. Um, then we're going to get air dry clay. We're going to use a large Ziploc bag to put it in during construction. Your name and uh, class code is going to be on it so that you can uh, utilize that next time. Uh, because if you didn't have it in a bag and seal it tight and put a little water on it for next time, it would dry out and you wouldn't be able to add things once it's dry. So when it's all finished, that's when we take it out of the bag, let it dry for about a week, and then we can add the painting. So it is a multi-step process um, and will take multiple class periods. So we're going to utilize form and slab methods and then our good old scratch and attach method as well for clay construction. The goal, you're gonna have one large storyteller with that mouth open telling the story. Then you're gonna have at least two to three or more, as many as you want, uh, small listeners. They can be human, they can be animal, they can be any kind of creature you want. You're going to decorate your storyteller when it is dry with some Native American symbols. Uh, you can kind of tell a story even with those symbols. And we're going to use different painting techniques, patterns, details, variety, as well as coming up with your own symbols. So you want to relate it to your culture, your experience as well. So we're using some Pueblo techniques and style but also our own style and techniques so that we're kind of merging the two to have a full appreciation of uh, our traditions and storytelling and our family and also the Pueblo people and uh, understanding uh, where they all come from too. So I have an example that I'll just kind of talk about a little bit here. So my example, uh, Helen Cordero talked about her grandfather and in my life, my grandmother was very important to me and basically raised me. So I wanted to honor her life with a sculpture, a storyteller. So her mouth is open, she's telling a story. The listeners are my older brother and myself as kids. Uh, and then on the back, uh, another listener is her favorite pet, her cat, Lucy. Uh, and then I sculpted some symbols as well. So I carved some in, I painted some on, I also sculpted some. So. The large flower on her head represents her favorite color, as well as her love of gardening and uh, planting. Also, I, she's holding a fruit bowl, and in the fruit bowl, there are seven fruits. She had seven grandkids. So a symbol, the fruit, her grandkids aren't fruit, but those fruits symbolize or represent uh, her grandkids. Then there's also a butterfly on the back, and that represents like her life, her transformation, beauty, symmetry, uh, nature, um, overcoming uh, obstacles for growth. And if you remember, we actually talked about these symbols, some of those symbols, uh, when we did our Frida Kahlo, Salvador Dali, symbolism self-portrait. Then also around there is rain and plains and corn uh, because she grew up on a farm, I grew up on a farm. Uh, the symbol for leader, because she was like the leader of our family. Uh, I did symbols for everyone being together, a feast, because she was a great cook, and then family and tribe, because she was kind of like um, our leader, the main person in our family, kept us all together, the glue, so to speak. Uh, so again, like I said before, pay attention to all sides because a sculpture and form is three-dimensional. You can walk all the way around. You got to pay attention to details on the front the back, the sides, all that good stuff. So, uh, oh, you can see little Lucy the cat there. Oh, some different symbols. I also had symbols for like sister uh, because she was a sister and mother uh, and grandmother. And then I just wanted to utilize different colors, different designs, different patterns to make it more exciting and stand out. And when you paint on clay, like you remember from past years, uh, it takes more layers because that clay kind of absorbs some of the paint, the watery paint, it absorbs it like a sponge almost, and you got a layer, layer, layer. So some of these symbols 
took up to four or five layers. So you have to use some patience as well. Now I'm going to show you some student examples. Uh, some people related it to their family, themselves, their little siblings, their whole family here. Uh, I love how they kind of extended it off to the side. This one is doing some acrobatics on the head. So this one's hanging upside down off the arm. So you can be very creative in how your listeners are scratched and attached to your main character, your storyteller. Here are some more student examples. I love this one because it's a reclining mermaid, uh, kind of a bowl of fruit here. Some listeners are attached to the back you can't see. And then a couple classes, I just put them all together as a whole group uh, so they could kind of be a community together as well. And you'll notice that some uh, storytellers are animals, some listeners are animals, some uh, are even from Minecraft creepers. So, you know, you can be creative with who's telling your story, what your symbols mean and represent for you and your family, uh, and what kind of story they're telling, and who's listening to that story too. So be creative and use your artistic abilities. Read the stories or listen to the stories that I put on uh, my channel as well. And then I'll also have a clay example for how you can kind of form the body uh, and heads and listeners and details like that. So I'll remind you of all our clay techniques and clay tools. So you guys are amazing. I cannot wait to see the symbols and the connections that you can make. And of course, your phenomenal sculptures. So for now, adios amigos and talk to you soon.